It might surprise you to know that your mind is hardwired and super coded to ensure that you keep gaining weight and not losing it. You might not have heard this before, but the truth is nature wants you to be overweight. Nature wants you to binge on sugar. And that's not something any logical diet can ever help you with. You see, your mind is programmed to make you binge, to make you over from the day you are born. You have a belief and a why about not getting enough food. You know, small children, when they're out and about, would much rather have a cake than broccoli. Why is that? Well, you might think, well, it's obvious it tastes nice. No, it's not that. Back in the day, a lot of stuff that was poisonous was bitter. But fruit was pretty healthy, so nature knew that if you binged on fruit, there's a lot of sugar, it would keep you going in lean times and it would almost never poison you. There are many, many problems with diets, but one of the main ones is they are based on logic. And here's a rule of the mind, it's important to remember it. In a battle between logic and emotion, emotion always, always, always wins. Logic doesn't win. After all, you wouldn't say to an alcoholic, now come along, you're ruining your life here with drink. Just have a lovely cup of tea. That's right, they'd look at you like you were mad. But saying to someone with a weight problem, now come along, stop eating takeout, stop eating fries, just have some nice salads and drink some water. It's as insane as telling an alcoholic to have a coffee, telling someone who is overweight to stop eating fattening food, yummy food, sugar, even just live on lettuce and salad doesn't work. Now in my last video we spoke about our relationship with food, how we view diets and the impact they can have on our lives. And what's very clear is that our relationship with food and diets is emotional. Overeating is emotional, it's always emotional. No one wakes up as I'm having a wonderful life. I think I'll get pizza, mac and cheese, and a liter of Coca-Cola and just go on a binge. It just doesn't happen. We binge when we're unhappy because our mind says food is gonna make everything better. After when you were a baby and you cried, what did you get? That's right, you got food and not just any food, you got sugary, high fat food and it made everything better. And our mind still has this belief, I'm having a bad day, a sad day, a lonely day, a stressed day, but I know something that makes me feel better, food. But you see, you also know that, yeah, I can eat a whole tub of ice cream and 10 minutes later I think, oh, I feel terrible now. Now I feel tired, I'm in this kind of food coma. I feel worse than I felt. I know it doesn't make me feel better, but I still keep doing it. I'm doing what I've always done and I know it doesn't work because you are having an emotional relationship with food that is based on what worked for a small baby, for a small child. Food is your friend, food is your companion, food consoles you, it rewards you, it pleases you, it's also fuel. And we are using food in the wrong way. Instead of eating and then saying, I've had enough now and stop, we are using food to comfort us, to console us, to tranquilize us, to make us feel kind of soft to get us through the day. We're using it as a reward, but also a punishment. I'm gonna deny myself all the things I like because I got to lose some weight. And all of this is what I call emotional eating. So you see, you're a human being. You don't wake up and say, let me eat something really wrong. I'll have broccoli for breakfast, kale for lunch, salad for dinner, and maybe some sprouts as a treat. That just doesn't work. We like food that tastes nice. We have taste receptors here. And funny enough, when we're angry, we often want to have crunchy apples, French bread, baguettes, chewy stuff, because it actually makes, makes these receptors work and it makes us feel better when we're emotional and sad we want sugar we want cupcakes with sprinkles or candy bars that remind us of our childhood when we're stressed we want big bowls of pasta that make us kind of feel like we're going to fall asleep so we're using food without even realizing what we're doing we're not eating food for fuel we're eating for energy we're also eating for reward for consolation for comfort for joy 
because food is more than fuel. We have an intense emotional relationship with food. It's what we think of as entertainment. After all, imagine Christmas Day, Valentine's Day without chocolate. Imagine Easter without Easter eggs. Imagine Thanksgiving without pumpkin pie and all the other things that we have. Imagine trick-or-treating without candy. So our mind has got so confused. Food makes us happy. Food is a treat. It's a celebration. In England, we have candy bars called Heroes, celebrations, love, and joy. And we're telling ourselves that we have something called Happy Meals and Fun Size. So what is that telling you? It's telling you if you want to be happy, if you want to have fun, there's a Happy Meal, there's some fun size candy, there's candy called Heroes, Celebrations, Divine and Love. They're going to make you feel divine and loved and heroic. And of course, we know that's not true. We all know that isn't true. When we want to care for someone, we make them a nice moment. When we feel heartbroken, somebody brings us chocolates. People visit people in hospital with cakes and boxes of chocolates. They take the nurses at the nurse's station, boxes of chocolates, the very thing you don't need when you're ill is sugar because it's not even a food, it's a preservative. Counting your calories, counting your steps, working out what you've eaten, denying yourself food and fasting doesn't work. And it doesn't work because it's not what you eat, it's what's eating you. Overeating is emotional. You're trying to deal with emotions. The stomach is the seat of all emotions. We feel sadness in the stomach, anger, disappointment, stress, anxiety, tension, loneliness in the stomach. And we push those feelings, everything. Oh, I'm feeling something in my stomach. I need to eat because the stomach is where you feel your emotions. And if the stomach is the seat of all emotions, and if overeating is emotional, then we need to go deeper beyond logic to where our feelings and emotions lie. And where our feelings and emotions lie is in our subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is a mind that is programming you, compelling you, directing you to eat destructively. Your subconscious mind is a place where you can find out why you have these beliefs. Burgers make me happy. You know, I worked with someone recently that I only saw my dad once a month and he would always take me out for a burger and a milkshake and he's dead now. Whenever I'm sad, I go to a burger bar and I have a burger and a milkshake and I never realized that I was trying to keep the memory going. Someone else said to me, hey, my mother was a very busy executive on my birthday. The one day of the year she'd stay home. We spend ages making a cake and she'd ice it and frost it and put candy on it. Whenever I'm sad, I go out and I buy big cakes with frosting and candy because that's how I remembered my mother loved me. My grandmother would give me chocolate bars. My auntie would buy me ice cream. And so for many of us, we are trying to get the feeling back. But what worked when you were a little kid doesn't work as a child. Your life is so simple. When you can tap into your subconscious mind using my program, you can change everything that you think about food. Remember, the thoughts create the feelings that create the actions that create the behavior. And you can go right back and change the thoughts. It's a game changer. When you change your thoughts, everything is possible for you. And once you do this, you can have the body you've always wanted. You can be the weight, the shape and size you want to be. You can have a healthy lifestyle. It will all be available to you. When you begin to discover that you're enough, that you can eat selectively, that you can reactivate, remanifest, regenerate, and indeed recreate the perfect relationship with food that you were born with. When you know that you can eat anything, when you can say the magic words, I'm choosing to eat an apple instead of a cake and I'm choosing to love it. I'm choosing to do this. I want this so much. Everything changes because you're worthy of it. You're choosing it. When you say I mustn't eat cake, I can't eat cake, I shouldn't eat cake, it's banned on this particular diet I'm on, you just turn up the desire for cake. When you can't have something, when it's forbidden, you want it more. We all saw last year people fighting in stores over toilet rolls. How crazy is that? But they were scarce. 
when we can't have them, we become obsessed with it. When you can have it, you actually find you don't necessarily want it or need it. So if you want to be normal about food, to change your thoughts, to change what you think about food, to change how you eat, to change your weight, your shape, your size, then I've got the framework you need to make this work for you. It's called the Dietless Life Framework. And once you understand this framework and start implementing the steps in your life, you will finally free yourself from being in that vicious circle of dieting. You'll free yourself 